This show contains movie spoilers and swearing. Hello. Hello, mate. How you doing? <laughs> hey. Can you hear me? I'm back. Back from the dead. <laughs> back from the dead. Back for good. Uh, <laughs> so, like, was it um, Return of the Living Dead or something like that, isn't it? Or, I don't know. There's, like, there's some, something from the 80s here in that phrase, isn't there? <laughs> you know what? People ask me how I'm doing. People say to me, you know, how are you, Dan? You, you know, things all right now? I say to them, look. When the earth quakes and the poison arrows fall from the sky, oh, yeah. <laughs> the pillars of heaven shake, I just look life in the eye and I say, give me your best shot, I can take it. I can take it. <laughs> then all of a sudden a monster <laughs> appears from the back of the truck and causes it chaos. <laughs> <laughs> That's my life. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to another episode of Bite Size Cinema. I'm your host, RJ McCready, and for this episode, we're going to be taking you guys back to 1983 to look at the third instalment of the Star Wars franchise, and that is The Return of the Jedi. And joining me for today to show uh, a little bit of a hiatus he was on is Dan Bone from the podcast on Haunted Hill. Dan, how you doing, man? It's great to be back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's like... Uh, Sounds like a, a game show host type of <laughs> entry there. <laughs> Tell them what they could have won, RJ. Yeah. Do you want the top, the middle, or the bottom? <laughs> oh, hang on a minute. We've only just started, cheeky. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I, I've always thought you could possibly do a good Bruce Forsyth impression as well. Uh, oh, I'd have to work on that. I don't know um, why. Good game, good game. He says that, <laughs> Sounds like Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, he'd, he'd make a great game show host. He would. Yeah, he would do, on. wouldn't he? Yeah, I don't know. Knock it off the block or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> 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 oh God, I can't do an Arnie impression. His his um, game show would be called Get to the Chopper. That's oh yeah. Yeah, in fact, no, that would just be a part of the game show, wouldn't it? He goes, let's get to the chopper now. <laughs> so, no, I can uh, just have to get to the chopper. <laughs> for a hundred pounds, for an extra hundred dollars. <laughs> I've been on your this episode for about one minute and we've already escalated into madness. This is brilliant. I've missed it. <laughs> yeah, we've just gone completely off. From where we was going to go to, so, you know, we're, we're heading towards Endor in the Star Wars universe, and we're talking about Schwarzenegger. Oh, oh, dear. Yeah. So, you've had an operation, mate. You've been through some wars. So, how are you feeling now, Dan? You sort of back to feeling better? I am. I'm feeling great. Um, yeah, I had um, a series of tumours, 10 in fact. Yeah. Nothing deadly, don't worry, um, for anybody that, that cares. But um, it was really putting weight on my vocal cords. And my. I had already had my salivary gland removed many years before because of a tumour. It's weird that they keep coming back. It's very rare. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I had to have an operation, which ended up being quite a major operation in the end. And I, as I sent you the pictures, I basically had a... One quarter of decapitation um, <laughs> from my Adam's apple round to the back Jeez. of my ear. <laughs> like, uh, um. <laughs> yeah, because the funny thing is, right, is that when you told me you was having this done, you know how you get like a picture in your mind of how the operation might go? And I literally yeah. thought you was going to be sat in a dentist chair and the doctor was going to just say, oh, he just sort of cut out something from your throat, you know, a little bit of a sort of general anaesthetic I suppose <laughs> uh, <laughs> then you showed me these pictures and I was like whoa <laughs> okay. yeah I, mean, I, I thought that was <laughs> it as well they told me it would be a day thing they told me I'd go in I'd be put under for an hour or so yeah uh, it was up they said there's possibly six of these tumours but 
we're not sure. Oh, it turns are. out there was 10, so they kept me in for two days. Um, and I needed to take almost four weeks off work, had to rest my voice. My voice seems to be getting back to normal now, and I'm feeling good and raring to go. Good, you know, man. I've, I've uh, done um, yeah. a couple of episodes of my show, um, yeah. and I feel I'm ready to guest on other shows. Nice to hear I am. Yeah, because as I said, just uh, as I mentioned before we started recording, and I was saying that because you had stitches, and it sort of created this kind of orca conversation between you and Gav, where Gav was saying, well, I had some stitches as well. <laughs> And there's like a little bit of a sort of comparison his, his between were, the two. Uh, in a different place. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is it. Uh, it's almost like a segment on your show, isn't it? It's, let's talk about Gav's bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. You know what I mean? Next to, next to World of the Strange, we'll <laughs> let's take, talk about that. Take, take a swig of alcohol whenever Gavin mentions his testicles. <laughs> you just chug it in. <laughs> oh dear! No, I'll say, mate. It's good to have you back. And um, you. what what have you been watching? As I always, like to ask, mate. What what what, what things have you been? What's, well, what's... as you as you can imagine, I've been off a long time, so yeah. I have watched a lot. So I'm not going to bore you with everything that I've watched. I, I have selected a couple of bits I'll mention to you mm. that might might you, two things off the bat that you would expect from me. Okay. All right. So okay. first, first of all. I watched a film called Slacks, S L A double X. Is that a new film or is that something from the old days? It's 2020, I think. Ah, right, okay. Is this the the film? A pair of killer jeans. Killer what? Jeans. You're kidding me, yeah? Seriously? Try jeans. Jesus. (laughs) How the hell is that possible? How have they made a film out of killer jeans? I mean, <laughs> because because um, they have slave labor. This shop has slave labor in India, and a, a woman fell into the cotton machine that she was putting the cotton in, uh, and right. her DNA and her spirit went into the cotton. And then these jeans are getting revenge on all the superficial people that work in this department store. By whenever they put the jeans on, it kills them in, in a different way. Sounds very sort of grindhouse to me. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of got that sort of. Because they brought that film out, didn't they, about a rubber tie, didn't they? Just called it rubber. Very sort of clever. You know just, what? Mm. It's kind of like that. Mm. It is kind of like that. It's fun. It's got a good message behind it. Um, <laughs> you know what you're getting with that kind of film. <laughs> yeah, I, I was trying to think of something there. Something, something to do with, you know, putting your jeans in the washing machine or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> Je- the jeans get better with every wash or something like that, is it? Or something? I don't know. <laughs> sort of like Levi's or something like that. Oh dear. come on Dan, there must be something better than jeans. You watched as well okay. anything else? Well well, before we talk about Return of the Jedi, yeah. I have now completed all of the Star Wars films because I've got Disney Plus now. Yeah. Um and I know you wanted to talk about them. I even watched the two Ewok Adventure spin offs. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And you, you even came out and said something that I thought of as well, because you actually preferred the Caravan of Courage, which was the first one, wasn't it? Yeah, um, I really did prefer that one, because the second one is not like Star Wars. The second one's like um, a bit like Willow or something. It's got witches and magic in it. Yeah, because it kind of gets a bit missold by the actual cover, doesn't it? Because you've got their dad who looks like he's going to kick some ass, but then a little bit of a spoiler here, he ends up dying, doesn't he? And then you've got Wilfred Brimley, is it? Who's, <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, so obviously managed to get away from Outpost 31 in the saucer and ended up on the end door somehow. Yeah, that's where he is, <laughs> <Yeah>. recovering. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I liked um, Caravan of Courage. I think it was a bit of a nostalgia for me. And... Um, I remember watching that when I was a kid and I always thought that Mace was like a young Luke Skywalker for some reason. Yeah, I think they definitely, I mean, with an, watching it with adult eyes, I think they definitely did that. They've given him the same hair and almost a similar outfit and they've sort of sold him as Luke Skywalker. I mean, certainly when I was a child, we would rent that a lot from Blockbuster Video or whatever the shop was back then. Because it was a Star Wars film, you know, it said Star Wars on there and we recognised the Ewoks. Um, and you know my my parents didn't often know they just go oh we thought you might like this it's, i think this is a star wars film 
and it wasn't but it was but it was at the same time so yeah. i had a lot of fun especially yeah. the caravan of courage that's a really good one yeah i thought the uh, mace character was he was a good character i would have liked to see more of, of him you know as a sort of franchise um yeah okay um anything else a couple of other bits it's gonna be, <laughs> be something else there dan as well well i wanted to ask you if you've been watching because the final episode is out this week falcon and the winter soldier yeah i have yeah i knew it was going to get on to that that's kind of where i was probably angling to uh yes i, 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 I yeah. know that you're a big falcon fan and 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 if you are which i know you are and i am too mm. see episode five ah uh, yeah it, yeah it's funny really because um becky you know my missus was saying to me that she was watching that episode and she actually came out and said you all very much like the falcon character we had this conversation you know and um it was, it was quite a good you know conference i won't get into it too much but um i just yeah i've always he, he's an interesting character for me I, I liked him when i watched him in winter soldier you know it's just cool yeah um he's kind of even tempered as well isn't he, he kind of balances things out and he, uh, he always wants to do right yeah. And sometimes he'll go against the norm to make sure that the right thing is happening. Um, yes. Uh, and I think that's what my missus was kind of getting on to me. She said, you're quite a leaving temp- tempered type of guy, but when something needs to be sorted out, you'll jump on it. But with reason, yeah. if that makes sense. And that's kind of what he's like, isn't it? Uh, Plus, you've you've got an awesome set of wings that you use with your jetpack. Um, to fly around and, and kick people in the head, so that you, that's the other thing you've got in common as well. Yeah, that's it, mate. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, what's his name? Mackie, isn't it? Anthony Mackie. Anthony Mackie. Yeah. Um, so I saw him him on a TV show the other day. It was Bear Grylls. Um, he was doing like some mountaineering and all that sort of stuff, and he just seemed like the Falcon. Do you know what I mean? He was a really, incredibly nice guy in real life as well. He seems like a yeah, he seems like a very nice guy, doesn't yeah. he? So, um and obviously, you know, the Winter Soldier, I like the way his character's progressing as well. Um Yeah, because he's a different kettle of fish. He you know, I was disappointed initially because he didn't seem to be kicking much ass, but it's because he's holding he's almost like the Hulk. He he has to hold back all this anger and PTSD yep. and everything because he's worried about what will happen when he unleashes it. But but when they went to that one city, um and he, he was sort of told by Zemo, you know, now you've got to kick everyone's ass in this in this nightclub, he just went it was like a switch, click, and he just went to town. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean uh and the other thing as well is I don't think this is quite so much of a spoiler because we I know you you're the same as me we're always very careful aren't we with spoilers and things like that mm. but um, this is I think this is out in the open Wyatt Russell playing Captain America uh, I mean, he's, <laughs> he's just doing a great job of that I just think him as an actor he's just enjoying this role um, I've heard him say he is you know just I mean Wyatt Russell is. Uh, I'm obviously I am and I'm sure you are biased a little about I'll follow his career just because I'm a big fan of his dad but he is definitely brilliant in this it's very brave for him to do this because he's getting a lot of slack from fans because he's had to portray a nasty version of Captain America you know in the comic books he was called US agent eventually Mm. and I'm not sure if they'll do that with him and turn him into US agent who was this very sort of programmable version of the of the of captain america right. um a little bit more evil um in fact damn right evil at times um so i don't know if they'll go down that full route with him i hope i love to, love to see more of him i think he's brilliant the way the, the, the way that he's and again you know i'm not really spoiling this but the way that his character has gone from being this everybody loves him to snapping in the middle and then he's now this on the other side of that spectrum and you know, it's just, it's great progression. He's brilliant. I yeah, love it. yeah. It's, um, it's certainly taking some sort of darker angles of the Marvel Universe, isn't it? These, the, the um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yeah, it's addressed, um, it's addressed a lot of things actually, which I didn't expect to. It's addressed a lot of racial tension. Yeah. Um, it's, it's addressed some political things. It's, it's addressed PTSD and, you know, yeah. and quite bravely for an American show, it's kind of, putting a spotlight back on america and how america views itself in the world 
you know um you know you've got moments where captain america says you know you have no jurisdiction here but then they're in germany so america really doesn't have any jurisdiction there either you know and well yeah but, yeah i know, mean very interesting the, these are in these are very good conversations or very good stories to tell aren't they because it's like what if we really did have superheroes in today's age do you know what i mean realistically mm. and i think the marvel universe is branching out onto that and it's probably the same as what shannon did with the film that we spoke about with um, unbreakable wasn't it um yeah you know what if we really did have superheroes and how would they deal with like living in today's time and uh there's one of the episodes again it's difficult isn't it to try not to spoil it but they do bring a financial angle in, don't they? So, how, <laughs> yeah, hey, they do you know do. what I mean? And it is interesting. It is, I think, because when you watch a Marvel film, there is so much going on that you come away, you don't really question that. But it is, well, how do these guys get on for money? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah. you know. It's, yeah, you've been given a, a bit of an insight, really, with mm. this series into the behind the scenes, you know, of a super, of a, what, uh, air quotation, a superhero, you know, like Sam. <laughs> really doesn't have any money you know where's all mm. your money when he goes to the bank yeah. well i don't really have any I, I get a lot of sort of goodwill from people and obviously tony stark would have paid for a lot of stuff as well and yeah but but they haven't really got a lot of money they just kind of drift around doing good deeds for people and yeah maybe getting the odd meal here and there and that's it well this is it yeah get you get your free coffee at starbucks you know <laughs> or whatever you know. <laughs> so yeah no it's um yeah, it's a very good uh, topic. I like the way it's gone. Uh, be interested to see how they go now with the with that universe, and maybe whether they'll bring any other characters into it. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing what Marvel do next because I know they've got a lot of films in the pipeline that I've already filmed actually. Um, that because of the COVID, so we've got Black Widow, we've got Shang Chi: The Legend of the Ten Rings, which is going to be the first sort of martial art Asian. Um, there's an, a Chinese guy in the lead with that. Again, M Marvel pushing that diversity again yeah. and again. It's so fantastic. Yeah. Um, I know we've got Captain Marvel 2. Spider-Man 3 is just finished filming. We've got Doctor Strange 2, which Sam Raimi is directing. Yeah. Apparently, apparently, he's bringing back Alfred Molina as Doctor Octopus, Jamie Foxx as Electro, and um, uh, Tobey Maguire, yeah. and Andrew mm. Garfield. So you might have this whole like multiverse thing going on. It's just so many films yeah. that uh, I'm still excited about. I am worried though, mm. because Endgame for me was such a phenomenal film that I do worry that they can live up to that. Um, but we'll see. Well, <laughs> you know, you put Bruce Campbell in the mix as well, mate, and it might oh. just do that. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce Campbell and Wyatt Russell in the same film and I'm on board oh yeah all day long yeah that's it yeah <laughs> oh man <laughs> gives, gives me a little tickling sensation <laughs> in a funny place that <laughs> starting to sound like Gav now <laughs> <laughs> well that's me listening to your show all these years mate oh but you know oh talking of shows sorry to interrupt you yeah what's congratulations that? Oh, yeah, yeah, um, thanks. 100, yeah. so this is 101, is it? 101, yeah, that's it, yeah, 101. Nice. Um, Congratulations, dude. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, yeah, no, I just, I, I've had a blast. I've really enjoyed, you know, putting putting these shows together. Um, I don't really mean that, you know, it's just, it's, it's great to have you on board. Because, um, as I said before, I've been listening to your show a long time, and it's great to talk to you about films. And I've had a number of other hosts from other shows on on board, and a couple of guests, and um, it just it's just a nice it, it, it's just a nice thing to do. And I'm sure you feel the same with Haunted Hill. Do you know what I mean? It's just yeah. I think when you're enjoying something, you can try and make a sort of success of it, and that's the sort of key. So, um, but yeah, no, it's been good, man. So, and it sort of comes it hundred did come quick, but I think a lot of that was to do with um, the lockdown. I had a little bit yeah. of time on my hands and. Um, show, shows are quite short in some places as well so um, but yeah, yeah long may it's so long may oh, put my bloody words together <laughs> <laughs> here's to the next hundred thanks there Dan I've done I've, I've spoken so much I've just lost the the art of conversation now <laughs> oh, no, cheers man thank you 
Right, shall we go to Endor then, Dan? Because we're, le- we're leaving the Ewoks out here a little bit, aren't we? Yeah, let's get on to that forest moon. Forest moon of Endor, let's do it. Okay, let's get on there. Let's play you guys' trailer and we'll see you soon. Return for the climactic clash between the forces of good and evil. Return to a galaxy far, far away. Return of the Jedi. The next chapter in the continuing Star Wars saga. The battle for freedom rages on. The heart of a hero. The courage of a rebel. The strength of a leader. The loyalty of comrades. The power of the Force. The cunning of the enemy. Destiny revealed. Is Darth Vader my father? A legend fulfilled. An epic of heroes, villains, and aliens from a thousand worlds. It's a trap! The quest continues. The circle closes. The saga lives on. Return of the Jedi begins May 25th at a theater in your galaxy. And welcome back, guys. So the synopsis of this film it's a very long synopsis here so bear with me uh, after a daring mission to rescue Han Solo from Jabba the Hutt rebels dispatched to Endor to destroy the second Death Star meanwhile Luke struggles to help Darth Vader back from the dark side without falling into the Emperor's trap it's an action adventure fantasy it's the third installment to the franchise come out in 1983 and it's got a 131 minute uh, run time so Dan Return of the Jedi mate uh, now you chose this one today because yeah uh, what does this movie mean or do for you or when did you first watch it I mean it, it, controversially it's my favourite Star Wars film my yeah. favourite from the from the original trilogy no matter where you put it um Purely because it was the movie that we watched in so much as kids. Um, I think we probably recorded it off television in the mid-80s and yeah. would have watched it over and over again. I certainly didn't see it at the cinema. I was only five when it came out, but I was very much aware of Star Wars. I had older cousins who gave me and my sister um, two Millennium Falcons, believe it or not. We had two of them, plus probably about 40 or 50 figures so I'd already started learning about Star Wars. I'd seen the first two Star Wars films, but it was just the one that was about the most as I was very became, becoming aware of the franchise and what it meant. So I liked the other two. I did. But for me, this was perfect for me at my age because yeah. it had Ewoks in it, but also it had a, an amazing lightsaber duel. It had the whole, the whole Jabba the Hutt bit. The first sort of half an hour or so is fun fantastic <laughs> for me and um i still dare i still challenge you to find a more exciting scene than the speeder bike chase on the forest moon of endor so that's my reasons your honor yeah <laughs> i i i can relate because obviously we're the same age i think um i might have just been six years old yeah would have been i seem to remember going to watch this at the cinema at that age mm. and I think that's why you said it's I think this one this for us had a big impact because we were surrounded not only by the film 
coming out, but it was also surrounded by the, like you said, the figures. Um, I remember there being a sticker album. Yep. And it just seemed to be everywhere, Return of the Jedi. I, I've, I've even got a, um, oh, a hardback, because it the annual upstairs oh, yeah. in the loft. Yeah. Um, and yeah, there's a lot going on in this film as well, isn't there? Do you know, it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, like you say, there's a jab at the hut scene at the beginning. Um, <laughs> you got Princess Leia, haven't you? In a <laughs> sort of You're banking right there. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, it's see. I see. The funny thing is, is that I I hold more nostalgia probably for this one and I do like you said the first movie because I can't remember watching the f- first movie until a later age if that makes yeah, sense yeah um, which is crazy isn't it do you know what I mean because Star Wars is such a the original one is a you know massive movie isn't it A New Hope and is in actual fact my favourite one A New Hope I, I, yeah. I do love that one but this one I seem to remember because it was everywhere at a young age I guess so and of course, by the time this one had come out, it had been six years since the original. Mm. So you had six years of merchandise, of figures, of toys, of T-shirt lunch boxes, and no other film really. Maybe E.T., but but merchandise wasn't really a thing really until E.T. and Return of the Jet and Star Wars really came out. So that was another reason why it sticks in our memory probably is because you know. There wasn't there wasn't any merchandise for Indiana Jones just because those films were, but something about Star Wars and E.T. I suppose E.T. was a cute, cuddly little character. Star Wars was full of different aliens and spaceships and characters. That's why they made great merchandise. Yeah. So that's another reason it sticks with us. Because they released the uh, Millennium Falcon for each different movie, didn't they? I think. Because if more than likely, more than likely. Yeah, because I remember getting the Millennium Falcon with uh, Return of the Jedi on it, and I have oh, nice. and I have looked at the. I've looked at these toys on eBay just out of curiosity, and you can see on the some of them have boxes, and some of them have, say, like Empire Strikes Back or the original Star Wars one. Um, but the, the the actual toys for this franchise are just amazing, aren't they? So well crafted. Um, I, I remember having one of the speeder bikes as well, and you probably remember this, Dan. You used to press a button. And it would actually and it would ex- break up, which is quite yeah, clever. I had one of those as well. Yeah. Um, I used to love doing that. I used to put a figure on it, press the button, and he would fly off, and it would all break into pieces. Yeah. It was really good. I had a Jabba the Hutt as well. Oh, did you? Um, oh, and you, you picked him up, took him off of the stage that he was on, and there was two gates, like uh, trap doors, and yeah. you could put a couple of figures in there underneath them. It wasn't very deep. It was only enough that you could lie down a couple of figures in it, but still you could do that whole scene, you know, with the rancor and everything. It was just so good. You know, I'm talking of that scene, you know, if we're being brutally honest, there was another reason why this film stands out to me. And that is, and I'm not being a pervert, but that is Carrie Fisher in the gold bikini. Just, I was about the right age when that did something in my brain and I didn't understand what it was at the time. <laughs> But um, I think we all did, mate. I'll leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, yeah, it did. To be honest with you, and I, I think she looks absolutely stunning. You know, in that outfit. Do you know what I mean? It's I just, yeah, <laughs> it's just like <laughs> possibly my first crush. If I had Gary on the hill, Gary Hill on the show right now, I could probably he'd probably have something to say about this. So yeah. <laughs> it's here now. <laughs> she, she's definitely in my you know my probably like my top five first crushes i would say you know and to the point that even when i went and watched the burbs a few yeah. years later when i was a bit yeah. older still really had the hotspur in that as well you know yeah she's lovely <laughs> yeah she, she's lovely in that as well isn't she in the in the burbs you know it's just great um <laughs> but yeah i mean we'll get on to that scene a little bit later on plus you've got like yeah, you've got Boba Fett who turns up as well, didn't you? Oh, He's I mean, come on, I've got a Boba Fett tattoo. You know, that's how cool that guy is. I decided to get a tattoo of him. He's one of the most liked people, and he's only in this for a minute or two, really. You've got Lando Calrissian being yeah. really smooth in this. Yeah. Um, you know, you've got everybody in this. And, and rewinding back a two minutes or so, you just summed it up for me. You said 
this is so much fun and i think this is the most fun out of the three original star wars films but without it getting too cheesy and i know people complain about the ewoks and i understand i understand they are probably a little bit childish but i do think there's a lot of fun in this film some of the lines harrison ford is having a whale of a time (laughs) yeah i was gonna say i was gonna get on to harrison ford because um i I only really noticed this because it's funny and i've heard you guys say this on your show is it's funny how when you're when you know you're going to review a film and you have to like kind of he's picking up on a bit of detail aren't you you think oh i think i might mention that on the show and you just do don't you i think when you're podcasting and yeah. i was just thinking how han solo is kind of like jack burton in this movie <laughs> it's like <laughs> do you know what i mean it's it's like things don't Something. go his way do they really it's just like you know I think there was something in that carbonite freezing chamber that he came out of it a little bit less serious and he was a little bit cheekier. Yeah, that's um, it, you know. Cool. Yeah, one of my favourite lines in this is even just the part where Han looks around and says, keep your distance, Chewie, but try and make it look like you're not trying to keep your distance. Just so <laughs> many funny little lines in this. Um, and it's got, you know, it's got redemption. It's got heroes being heroes, villains finally getting their comeuppance. You know, we've got force ghosts, force lightning, and everything's tied up with a nice big bow at the end. Because this is the final one, as far as we were aware. And that's yeah. another reason why I really love this this one as well. It's just like this lovely big bow tied up at the end of a trilogy. Yeah, I like the way to tie it up. And like you say, there's an awful lot going on in this film as well, isn't there? Um, and the other thing, I, I think I quote Ricky Morgan on this as well, because he's a big Star Wars fan. And I think what he liked about these movies was that George Lucas kind of trying to show you something different. Um, so kind yeah. of, you know, going to Endor and seeing the Ewoks is, I suppose, seeing something different in the franchise, isn't it? Seeing some new characters and... Um, and with something, with something like Star Wars, you can do that so easily because you can literally just go to another world. Well, yeah, because know. this is... Um, uh, so, so there's a film that we reviewed, which is in the George Lucas universe, which is Willow. Mm-hmm. So when you so so some some people have said that Willow is in the Star Wars universe. It's a planet in that you know going on. I can see that. And I, I used to think, um, well, how can it be a Star Wars universe? Because they you know it's primitive, isn't it? You know the sword and sorcery and all this sort of stuff. But then when you look at the Ewok planet they're primitive as well aren't they so i yeah. guess it could be plausible in some ways yeah, but, yeah definitely you yeah. know I, i've even considered that things like willow and that that perhaps it's not magic perhaps it's the force that they've got you know well, on that planet. Yeah. Uh, yeah true when i was when i was a child I, I would quite often and the toys were completely different sizes but i would quite often put my he-man toys and my star wars toys together and and, you know, they were the same guys to me, you know. Some of them had the force and some of them had the power and that was it, really. You know? <laughs> Sorry, mate, I don't know why this made me chuckle. It's like Dan Bone's old multiverse. <laughs> that was what it was. <laughs> the, the, DB, the DBU. Hello, I'm, I'm Action Man. Where the hell am I? <laughs> it's like, quite with He-Man and Star Wars. Oh, dear. Well, you know. <laughs> oh, man, that's cool. I like that. Yeah, it's just made me chuckle. I don't know why. Um, it's so I'll, I'll give some figures here as well. It's made for thirty-two million dollars. It took a whopping five hundred million dollars at the box office. Wow, that's it, crazy. Um, it was written by Lawrence Kas- Kasdan. He's guys pretty much written all of these. He, he wrote uh, Indiana Jones as well. So very clever guy. He's come up with all these ideas with obviously mm. with the help of George Lucas. Um, and it was directed by. So this is this surprise me. Directed by a guy called Richard Marquand. Yeah, Richard Marquand. Who, when you look at his IMBD, he's kind of just sort of come out of nowhere. You know, he's doing a couple of short movies before this, and uh, boom, you know, suddenly he's making a Star Wars movie. You know, it's not crazy. He did yeah, a good job. He did, of it. Um, I think he did. He do a, a Van Damme movie as well. Um, <laughs> I knew you were going to... Pretty sure he directed... <laughs> Josh, did you see... Ah, oh, yeah, you go. You would fan damn Easter egg there, mate, in a Star Wars movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he directed a Van Damme movie. I might be wrong. I might uh, be wrong. Let's just say he did, shall we? You know what I mean? 
<laughs> I think any. Okay. I think it would be a film director. Any, if every film director should sort of direct a Van Damme movie. <laughs> Steven Spielberg. Oh my god! Can you can imagine, you imagine that? that? <laughs> Saving Jean Claude Van Damme. <laughs> the force is with you. The force. <laughs> Yeah, he'd be wearing a, a real low-cut sort of vest, wouldn't he? He'll be doing the splits everywhere. everywhere yeah, he goes. It's all right, Sean. You really don't have to do the splits on this occasion, okay? <laughs> no, no. You don't understand. I really think my character would do uh, the splits in this scene. Yeah. <laughs> don't cut it. <laughs> the other thing is there's a little bit of a American werewolf in London tie over in this as well. In Ooh. this movie, an uh, actor called Michael Carter, he plays Bib Fortuna, the guy with the. It's kind of like Bub of um, Jabba the Hutt's or right hand man. Tentacle head. I yeah, know, that's I? it, yeah. He was the guy who got killed in the underground station by the werewolf. Ah, uh, I can film. see that now. Yes, I can see that. Um, so, yeah, I just thought I'd chuck that one in there, mate, because I'm not much of a sort of horror fan that you are. I didn't know if you knew that or not, but. Um, I so didn't know that. That is a good piece there. of trivia. Yeah, I like yeah. that. We've also got some of the Time Bandits in here as well. Jack Purvis, Malcolm Dixon, and Mike Edmonds play the Ewoks, obviously. Yeah. With uh, Warwick Davis. And some of those guys probably, well, I know a few of them ended up being in Willow as well. Yeah, they um, did. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you start. Yeah, yeah I think there's uh, certainly in the village at the beginning, you can see them, can't you? Um, and on a side tangent, very strangely, I've realised that the last two films I've reviewed, last film from my show was Leprechaun 2 with Warwick Davis, and now I'm reviewing Return of the Jedi with you, with Warwick Davis. Oh, that was a little bit of a time. <laughs> yeah. And, and knowing you, I think you said, are you going to continue that franchise? Or just a little yeah, bit. Yeah, we're going to do number three next year. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Um... The other thing I was going to mention here was Paul Verhoeven from Robocop. And what's the other one he did? One of the bugs, wasn't it? Oh, uh, Starship Troopers. He was going to do this movie as well. He was going to direct it. Wow, he must uh, have been very young then. Yeah, he must have been. Maybe not, actually. I think he's so, a bit older. So we could be now saying that, you know, he was Return of the Jedi, but not. But I just thought I'd throw that one in there. And there's a... Um, cool, I, I just... Sort of got a few bits here I've sort of pulled up there's also a Clones War tie in here one of the commanders from that franchise is one of the assault team commanders you only see him for a little bit he's a guy with a grey beard and he is actually one of the main okay. characters in that so I thought I'd chuck that one in there as well so there's a little bit of a tie wow. so yeah so yeah there's a few little bits of trivia in that and uh, there's always one little bit of trivia. It's not really trivia. I've always thought it was very strange, but I don't really care, and I've always accepted it. Is the fact that there's a Tarzan reference because Chewie does the oh, 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 oh when he swings across the jungle at one point, which I've always thought was really, really weird that he does. Oh, I never really picked <laughs> up on that, but yeah, I suppose yeah, he does, doesn't he? Because yeah, that's right, he does. Doesn't he pat his chest as well when he comes out the the attack? I think he does. I think he does. Yeah, he yeah. does all that, doesn't he? Joey, get down here. Yeah, Actually, that's it. wait. I've got an idea. I've got an idea. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And even oh, Princess yeah. Leia comes out and says, R2D2, where are you? Um, I seem to remember. I don't know why we sort of mimicked that as kids. I don't know. Sort of like a bit of a catchphrase, stuff like that, you know, when you were I kid. mean, there's a lot of catchphrases in this one, isn't there? You yeah. know, you've, you've got the. You've got the return of, you know, I love you, I know. They, they get flipped around. You've got the whole, no, I am your father, and that kind of thing. You've, there's, there's a lot of good mm-hmm. quotes in this film. Yoda, when, for the moment he's in it, he has some good quotes yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, Jabbers. Willy Willy Wonka. Willy Willy Wonka. Me. He's a fan of Gene Wilder, isn't he, Jabba? Oh, this is it, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> World of pure imagination. <laughs> you having a laugh, Wonka? <laughs> Why, are you having fun? <laughs> Sorry, <I don't> <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking of Gene Wilder now, meeting Jabba the Hutt. Yeah, this is it, yeah. Oh my god, yeah. Imagine him stood there. Sorry. 
It was a, all questions need to be submitted in writing. <laughs> nothing you get. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! <laughs> oh, so yeah. Uh, oh dear! Oh man, what? Never expected that. <laughs> amazing! It's, it's just amazing. It's just great, and you know, it's. I wouldn't even know where to begin with it, really. You know, um, the fact that they've got the balls to sort of start with the second Death Star being built. You know, we thought it was all over, but no, they're working on a second Death Star. Mm. It's crazy. And I do like the way that they've got it in, in construction as well. I, I kind of found that cool as well when I was watching this as a kid, do you know what I mean? The Death Star that's being built. And, yeah, it's just, I don't know, it just looked really cool. Yeah, it's totally. Kind of worse, it's like you can almost see the scaffolding with the bloke sort of walking around like... <laughs> yeah. what, <I> love. <laughs> <laughs> what time are you aim for tea tonight? <laughs> 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 Get a bag of chips on the way out. Oh, damn, I forgot my sandwiches and my tea. <laughs> this bloody empire, they don't pay nothing, do they? Yeah, this is it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is it, you know. <laughs> Darth Vader sort of going on the site, like, I need you all to hurry up. And they're like, yeah, yeah, we'll be as long as we need to be, mate. Don't yeah. worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This week's episode's about building the Death Star. <laughs> oh, God. I like it. Um, so I guess we'll get into it from there then, really. Um, let's do you know, it, man. I'd... Let's do it. Let's, 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 let's talk about this movie. Oh, I like it when, it. Um, you know, they are, they're building it and they think they're doing a good job, you know. And, and, and there is some humour throughout this film because Vader arrives on the Death Star and they're very nervous because no one expected him to arrive to keep it, to sort of check up on it, like the foreman, check it up on the, the, the you know, the yeah. construction yard, make sure everything's all right. And uh, he says, oh, what are you doing here, Lord Vader? We didn't know. And he's like, I'm, I've come to get you back on schedule. And he says, well, I assure you, we're working as hard as we can. You know, maybe if we had more men, we'd be able to do it. And then Vader drops the bomb. He's like, well, maybe you can ask the Emperor for more men when he arrives here himself in a few days. And the guy's like, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's totally relatable as well, isn't it? It's almost like when you work it, you're at work and... Oh, the boss is tired and everybody's going, oh, shit. Well, maybe you can ask the managing director for a raise. Dan, yeah, when he in yeah the this is it, yeah. Good job, mate. Imagine your director <laughs> turning up like, like he does. You know, in a Quite operational, <laughs> young Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. And so that, um, that gives us a little look at what the, um, the Death Star is that. Sorry, what were you going to say? No, I was only going to say um, you can sort of see a hierarchy here, can't you? As well, of in this movie, Darth Vader is has got someone who is more powerful than he is, and it's almost yep. like there's a little bit of I don't know. Darth Vader doesn't seem as bad as he was in the other two movies. If you know what I mean? In this one, you can almost yeah. see that he's kind of swaying towards the the lighter side rather than the dark side. And He's good. just more of a bully boy initially, and, and but it's still the the rest of the um, uh, uh, empire is so disposable because any time any of them make a mistake, they're yeah. dead, you know. And it's the next man that's been promoted up after them. It's just completely, literally cutthroat, you know. Mm. Um, but Vader, yeah, Vader was badass as he is. There's always the emperor above him, always. Yeah. And the other thing is, I found his even though. And this must be very clever acting for was it was it Dave was it Prowse was it Dave? David Prowse yeah. So, and I, I it's it's weird because obviously there's no facial features is there on the mask, but the way his body reacts kind of gives you a bit of reaction to how he's thinking. And that's I think he, I, mean, I think it's clever. underrated. I think he is, and you know, a lot of people say, "Oh, he's a very tall man, very big man." Cause he was, you know, Mister Universe or something at one point. The Green Cross Code man. He's from Bristol, my hometown. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, my dad actually, on a side note, my dad actually met him several times because my dad was a butcher, a junior butcher, uh, and then a, a butcher after that. But when he was a junior butcher, he would quite often serve David Price in in the. In the butcher shop, he would oh, come well, in to buy his sausages or whatever. Yeah. Um, and they all knew of him because he was the Green Cross Code man. Yeah, that's a, it. Yeah, a weightlifter. Yeah. Yeah. He'd been in um, 
He was in one of the Sinbad movies or something as well, wasn't he? He was in something like that. He's been in a few movies, a couple of Hammer movies as well, as a strong man. And, and then obviously he was Darth Vader. So I remember my dad telling us, you know, Darth Vader used to come and buy his sausages from me. And I never really understood that until I was a bit older. And, and then there was a documentary on Netflix called, I think it's called I Am Your Father. And it's a documentary all about David Prowse and how he had a bit of a rough deal, really, from George Lucas and that, because they thought he leaked these the plot of the third star wars the this star wars movie and basically you know he was shunned from a lot of the star wars stuff oh, after right, that okay. it's an interesting documentary but there's one just one bl- bit on there where he says um i knew i'd made it i think he says something like, i knew i'd made it i won't do the Bristolian accent because none of your listeners will understand me um but they sound a bit like me but but more like a pirate right. um but he said something along the lines of i knew i'd made it when the boys in the butcher shop used to sort of sing dun 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 dun, dun when I'd walk in and oh, they'd really? sort of quote the lines. Oh, yeah, and right. I thought and I thought that's my dad he's talking about. That's yeah, insane. Yeah, yeah. Like Oh that must so be cool. great watching that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. A little time of your dad's butcher shop like so but, Yeah. Oh, Darth Vader yeah. sausages. There you go. Well I was gonna say, <laughs> yeah, I just sort of <laughs> I was holding back I was like, do I say it? <laughs> I can imagine I've, I'm trying to think of a joke along the lines which is Darth Vader was having a barbecue and someone who said how well done do you like your sausages and he said the dark side yeah that's it that's terrible I was I was the same joke. there's a joke here somewhere Darth Vader <laughs> Darth Vader goes into a butcher, butcher, butcher shop or something I was no I, <laughs> I can't leave it at that man <laughs> jeez <laughs> Oh, well, there we go. So, um, yes, he's great and very imposing. But we cut away from the Death Star and we cut to Tatooine, the desert planet of Tatooine, yeah. which is actually Tunisia. I'm guessing you've been here because you've been to every bloody movie place uh, in the world. Have you been here? No, I've been to the place next to it. I've been to Morocco, um, but I haven't been to Tunisia. It's on my to-do list. I think I was... Yeah. We were going to try and go there, obviously, before... It's definitely on the cards. Um, but we went to Morocco, which was actually the film location for The Mummy. Uh, there, we go. there you go. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> you know me, Dan. Um, <laughs> well, at least you got somewhere in. Well, the next, yeah, we're in... Uh, sorry, mate. The ta- next, Tatooine. The next one's Frankenstein's <laughs> Castle, but I'll get into that later on. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll tell Where you about that. Where is that? that? Where is yeah. that? It's in Germany. So, uh, yeah, I'll get into that later. I'll take Do you know where I'd like to go? Um, is the, the castle from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, which is... Um, is it Switzerland? Oh, I think Bulgaria. Is, yeah. Bulgaria. I think it's in Bulgaria. It just looks beautiful. It does look lovely, doesn't it? Yeah, it's got a... Yeah. <laughs> it's a posh, posh, travelling life, travelling <laughs> life from me. I'll be happy you, Dan, wouldn't it? Scrumptious. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, maybe we should. I put that. I'll should, put it on the list. Jeez, I was gonna say bang, maybe, bang, maybe yeah. we should cover that film one day. <laughs> it's, a, it's a posh, posh travelling life. <laughs> Lovely pops, candy canes. Oh, oh my god, yeah. Oh Jesus creepy. Christ, this is a creepy dude, yeah. Oh dear. Anyway, back back on Tantooine. <laughs> <laughs> Back on Tatooine, R2-D2, C-3PO, mm. our droids are wandering along the desert and they're heading towards what we find out is Jabba's palace, Jabba the Hutt's palace. And they arrive at the, the door yeah. and uh, they sort of tap on the door and there's, oh, well, there's no answer, R2. We, we should probably go. And then this crazy eyeball thing comes out the door and says, dooka, 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 and makes like a weird language mm. noise. And they sort of say, oh, hello, um, we're here to see um, Jabba the Hutt. The door opens, and they head on in, and we uh, we see the Gamorrean guards, the big green pigs, don't we? They're pretty cool. I had one of those as a figure as well. Uh, yeah, I had one of them. They're mm. brilliant. Um, I did see a meme which disturbed me, which said they look like the offspring of uh, Kermit the Frog and Miss Piggy, if they ever did have a child. <laughs> oh, I can't unsee that now. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. Oh, dear. Right. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Um, so, <laughs> Bib Fortuna from the American Marathon London movie, mm. as you pointed out, he heads up to them 
and he says something to them, and, and R2 sort of bleeps at him, and C3PO says, oh, we're, we, are a, we have a gift for Jabba the Hutt. Now, he doesn't realise that they are the gift, but that comes up in a moment. So we're going to what I can only describe as Jabba's living room, I guess. Is it a living room? Who knows? It's a throne room, I think it's, that would be cool, I think. <laughs> yeah. So British of me, I put living room. <laughs> Mate, listen, I ain't going to, no, what am I to say? I think it's a throne room. Yeah, so British of me to say throne room as well, I think. So there you go. <laughs> Yeah. It's right. bleeps out. out. <laughs> yeah. And his little message comes out and it's a hologram of Luke. And he says, um they they show Han Solo in the carbonite up on the wall. And Luke basically says, Look, I've, I'm here to bargain for Captain Solo um as a gift to you. I present these two droids. They'll serve you very well. <laughs> yeah. <And laughs> C3PO is immediately what? Like, <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. Um, so that's a little bit of a spanner in the works, if you're pardon the pun, for the two droids. Mm. Now, I don't know if you were watching the extended version or not, like me. Uh, yeah, I, I watched this on Disney, so I figured that was that the extended version on there. <laughs> this is where you get the crazy new scene of the dance routine. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it seems a bit... Oh, didn't it? Do you know what I mean? I don't know. What do you reckon? Did you like it? I, I think I preferred uh, the original no. one, if I'm honest with you. Yeah, I'm not a fan. It's it's just really weird. Um, but I can hear the song in my head. It's kind of like... Ooh, ooh, ooh. And I'm just like, what is going on in this scene? It's, yeah, it's, it, <sighs> I, I was watching it. I must admit, it's my one criticism of like... I don't think that was necessarily needed. I can sort of see where they were going with it, but I just thought... Because you've got the two dudes who are on the... Oh, what is it? The, what's it? That sand ship later on. Oh, the sand barge, yeah. Sand barge, that's it. And they're like playing the drums or something, aren't they? <laughs> it's like, what what's going the? on? So, yeah. yeah. The only good thing about this dance routine and the bits that it's spliced into is that we do see... Um, Boba Fett walking around in the background. So yeah, we do get right. to see him for the first few times. And we get to see one of the dancing girls get pulled into the Rancor pit, mm -hmm. um, which is this great big sort of T Rex type thing that Jabba keeps as a pet, um, which is great, you know. So we, we get a little bit of foreshadowing there about something that'll be coming up a little bit later on. Um, and at this point, Leia. Or, well, we don't know it's Leia, but a bounty hunter arrives with a captive, a captive Wookiee, in fact. None other than our friend Chewbacca the Wookiee. Yeah. And uh, she sort of turns up and demands, you know, I demand you to let um, Captain Solo go. And and Jabba laughs and says, you know, why why should I do anything that you've said? And she says, I'm holding a thermo thermal detonator, which I'm guessing is a pretty big bomb. Um, and she threatens to blow everyone up with it but Jabba laughs and he says this is this bounty hunter is my kind of scum um, so he kind of decides to make a bit of a, a deal uh, with the bounty hunter we do also notice in the background Lando Calrissian in yeah. disguise just pulls his mask down a little bit there doesn't he but, yeah. yeah that's another figure I'd actually I think they brought out quite a lot of stuff didn't they I, don't know I had that was. one he had a removable helmet I removable think. One. yeah that's it so this is really cool because these guys individually have all infiltrated Jabba's palace so the droids got in and sort of accidentally gave themselves as a present Han was already in there he's the rescue mission Lando's already in there. He seemingly got a job undercover as a, like a, a, a guard or something. And now Leia and Chewie have turned up and they're doing the classic put Chewie in cuffs, pretend he's a prisoner routine. <laughs> yeah. So they've all went infiltrated this really nicely. Um, and then we get our, our moment now where uh, Chewie gets imprisoned, taken down and Get, he meets up with Han. I oh, know this is. He doesn't meet up with Han yet, does he? He meets up with him doesn't later, doesn't he? Yeah, that's it. It's uh, yeah because Leia that's comes right. back at the night time, doesn't she? That's right. She comes back. She unfreezes him. Yeah. 
and uh, he says who are you and she says somebody who loves you very much <laughs> it's just it's great it's just great but in the background we hear oh, 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 that's oh, it and oh, he's oh, like oh, i know oh, that oh. voice i know that voice oh no that's it and you know he's only been awake for seconds and he's straight into that now listen java we can cut a deal here listen yeah. buddy Come on, you know, I didn't mean this. I didn't mean that. And he's straight away, you know, Mr. Mouth is talking, 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 trying to get out of the situation. Yeah. It's not going to happen. Um, this is where he gets reunited. So they take him down, chuck him in the prison. Hmm. And he's, he's in there. He's a bit blind from the uh, the carbonite initially. And he hears a noise. And then out of the shadow steps Chewie. And he gives him a great big wookie hug. Mm-hmm. That's a bit like when I come home sometimes in the morning and I see my dog. <laughs> <laughs> get that same sort of reaction. I think he, he you know, because there's there's a ways I am with my dog that I am like Han Solo, because I kind of go, yeah, all right, pal, okay, all right, I got you. <laughs> and I, I, I do say, come on, kid, let's go. You know, a little bit of punch it. Yeah, go and punch it, Chewie. Yeah, it's like, yeah, got a mini cheap backer in the house. <laughs> and Chewie, Chewie gives us a little bit of exposition quite cleverly here because he, we don't speak his language so he he says a few you know, oh, yeah, words in his language yeah, yeah. Um, Han says you know where is everyone what's going on and he says something and he says what do you mean Luke's a Jedi knight <laughs> yeah, gosh what is going on so so uh, <laughs> that's him saying Luke's a Jedi knight <laughs> I know pal I, I know pal <laughs> everything's going a bit out of control and it's like <laughs> so <laughs> well it's all gone tits up now because quite literally because Leia is in her gold bikini mm. she's chained to Jabba and we've got a full on party going on here you know it's not doing great but a mysterious cloaked figure arrives at the palace he does yeah. and he kind of makes his way down he sort of just wafts his hand around people seem to be doing what he says and he makes his way down to Jabba and um Bib Fortuna sort of says, oh, I present to you um, Master Skywalker, Jedi Knight. And he says, oh, you you know, you idiot, you let him control your mind. Um, and then he tries to do something to Jabba, Luke, but Jabba says, your, your Jedi mind tricks don't work on huts. So, you know, there's nothing you can do about that. Luke basically tries to barter with him and he says to him, at the end of the day, Jabba, if you don't give me back my friends, things aren't going to end very well for you. But uh, Jabba doesn't really think that's going to happen. So pulls a little lever, trap door opens, down goes Luke. Yeah, it's a pretty cool fight scene now, isn't it, between him and this monster? And off um, again, as I said earlier, it's you forget how much is actually in this movie. You know, in terms of detail, and there's quite a lot going on here, isn't it, at the beginning of this movie? Before you, you know, you've obviously got a lot more to go on in the rest of the movie. Um, so yeah, love this, love this monster. Great. Yeah, you, you know, we're only 10 or 15 minutes in, you know, and we're, we're already doing all of this stuff. And this, we've got this great stop motion creature, um, the Rancor that's kept underneath Jabba. And Luke, you know, we've already seen it devour someone and Luke has to try and outwit it. He uses a classic bone in the mouth to yeah. stop it from biting him. And eventually he figures out, if I can lure it over to the door... I can crush it beneath the door, which he does. And then we get this, it's quite sad, but also really funny, the, the sort of the big fat guy that yeah. sort of looks after him. Yeah. <laughs> he starts crying, doesn't he? <laughs> he's, he's lost his pet, hasn't he? Yeah, do you know he's what like, I mean? Oh, 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 oh. And the, guy, the other guy's like, oh, patting him on the shoulder. Yeah, it's, sort of, it's so <laughs> weird. They didn't need that, but I love that they did it. I, I, yeah, I kind of like that because, like I say, as a kid, I think I used to laugh at that bit. It's almost like, you know, He's not going to be able to cuddle his pet when he goes to bed at night now, is he, or something like that. <laughs> but the actual feat, the thing here with that guy, is that he was a... That type of character was originally supposed to be Jabba the Hutt. Um, yeah, I, I remember, because in the deleted... Well, the re-added scene in the very first yes, New Hope, yeah. he looks a bit like that, doesn't he? That's right, yeah, because that's why um, Han Solo comes out and says, you know, Jabba, you're a wonderful human being. You know. Yeah, I remember that scene actually. Um, but yeah, so there you go. But now this guy's in tears, and yeah. <laughs> really uh, and Jabba's so. very annoyed. He's lost his pet. So Jabba announces that they are about to see what it's like 
to be digested in the belly of the Sarlacc, Sarlacc pit for a thousand yeah. years. Ooh. So, um, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> it gets better, doesn't it? You know, poor old Harley's been in this grip tonight and now he's going to get swallowed up by this Sarlacc. But then, like I say, Hun still plays it cool, doesn't he? So, like, okay. You know, all right, Luke, how's it going? Yeah, what's, what's, what's the odds like? Uh, not good. Okay, just normal then. <laughs> like... Yeah, and they're kind of like reunited, you know, because by this third film, you know, we haven't got to establish anyone's relationships. They're already friends, they're buddies, they've been through yeah. a ton of adventures together. Some of them are in love. We've got Han and Chewie, the best friends, you know. We, we know, and that's another reason I love this, because they've already got these established relationships. Yeah. Um, so we're on the sail barge, <laughs> and we get to see R2-D2 as his alternative job as a waiter. <laughs> <laughs> He's fitting into that just fine, isn't he? You know, he seems to be getting on all right with that. Yeah, he, he fits into his environment, doesn't he? I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? He reminds me a bit of Inspector Gadget with all the bits coming out of his hat. Oh know, yeah. He's sort of he's serving all the different drinks to everybody and cocktails and stuff. It's brilliant. Oh man, yeah, Inspector Gadget, bloody hell. yeah. Brain was it? So, brain, brain, the dog. Sorry. Brain, yeah, the, the the dog brains and Penny, the the girl. Hmm. Great, great shot cartoon that was yeah go go gadget arm <laughs> <laughs> this message will self-destruct yeah next Ooh. time gadget next time <laughs> <laughs> so, oh my god so, he, <laughs> what, do you, what do you want gadget on this <laughs> god we haven't even got a jab of the huts then yet and we've already spoken about like what do you want and bloody <laughs> gadget <laughs> Well, on the sail barge, Luke um, and cool as a cucumber because made to walk the plank, you see, into the Sarlacc, which looks like a great big spiky mouth. Some people say it looks a bit like a cat's bum hole, whichever yeah, I was gonna say, it does you want to say. Yeah, it does look like an arsehole in the sand, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Either way, I don't want to go in there, RJ, is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's like a big human being that's sort of, you know, when you're a kid and you cover your dad in the sand on the beach. <laughs> Just laying the other way around. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> and do you know what? Funny enough, this is probably another reason why as children we were afraid <coughs> of, of, of uh, quicksand. Because of this again. Oh, of course, you know? yeah. There's that as well, isn't there? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's it. This so, is probably a good time to mention the music because, you know, John Williams. Mm. What, what more can be oh, said? Yeah. But I'm a big point. So this point, it's just very subtle. And you get this sort of like, berm, mm. berm, berm. And just as Luke prepares to sort of, he sort of looks over and almost gives a bit of a wink. He jumps down, grabs the plank flips back up r2 fires his lightsaber and i remember as a kid thinking this was one of the coolest things i'd ever seen yeah and he flips up grabs it in midair lands takes out two or three guys and we have this awesome fight now um han gets free chewy gets free um, and then we've got lando join in we've got um han's free and he's joined in chewie's joined in and some of the guys are flying off the side and land and going into the solar pit jabba is watching from his barge sort of angry that this is going on it's a badass fight but it's all very comical because han's blind as well yeah um <laughs> and he's you know everybody knows the whole boba fett mm. boba fett and he turns around hits boba boba's jet pack goes off he goes flying into the side of the barge and goes down into the the Sarlacc pit, bye bye Boba, or is it? Well, mm. as we find out, don't we? Oh, I don't <laughs> want to spoil that. I won't spoil that. Um, Leia gets her time to shine. She grabs a chain that she's, you know, chained with, and she jumps around the back of Jabba, and she actually kills him. She strangles Jabba, um, his yeah. little buddy. <laughs> oh, we've got to mention him as well, don't we? Yeah, that's a good impression, actually. Yeah, he just jumped straight out of, like, Labyrinth or something like that, he's, isn't he? He's definitely in the Labyrinth. Oh, I yeah, can imagine yeah. him sitting yeah. next to David Bowie. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. Oh, my gosh, you imagine Jake David Bowie in the old hut? David Bowie. I can imagine him jumping, sat in there. Yeah. yeah. Jabba, get me. I can't even do a David Bowie impression. I'm not How try. far are you willing to go, Chewbacca? <laughs> 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 Oh, 
Chewy and elaborate. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> they all manage to escape. Uh, they blow up the sail barge and they fly off. And that's it. We've kind of completed the, the mission, really. So yeah, that's sort of the first Catch your breath part. now. Mm. Yeah, and then we got the uh, Millennium Falcon for the first time, haven't we? Um, yep. And I was saying that uh, I didn't realise this. It's, you don't actually see... I don't think you actually see Han Solo in the cockpit of the um, Falcon because you only see a you only hear him on the communication tunnel, can't you? Talking. You're probably right though. I think you only see Lando and Chewbacca. Yeah. Uh, towards the end, <clears throat> well, it's not even Chewbacca towards the end. <clears throat> yeah. So they go on their separate ways. So they're not stopping for a break because you know they've got other things to do now. Um, Luke jumps into his X-wing with R2. And he says, to, yeah, we're going to the Dagobah system. Yeah. So we know where he's going. He's going to see Master Yoda. Um, so they all go on their separate journeys. Meanwhile, the managing director has turned up at the Death Star, RJ. <laughs> yeah, isn't he? Yeah, this is it. He's, he's dressed Everybody up. is sort of, oh, oh dear. <laughs> I think I might just go and work for the Rebel Alliance, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like... Imagine getting the call. Um, Dan, um, Emperor Palpatine just wants a quick word with you in his office. <laughs> yeah, that's it, yeah. Oh, really? Fucking hell. All right, I'll be up in a minute. Get my <laughs> P45. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so he arrives, oh. and he, he basically says to Vader... Everything's moving nicely. This Death Star is, you know, being built. It's going to be, you know, even stronger than the first one. And our main plan is to turn Luke to the dark side of the Force. It's all good. Everything's working as we want it to. So, a little bit of exposition there. That's nice. Back on Dagobah, we're with Yoda. And they have a little conversation, Luke and Yoda, just having a little chat in his little hut. And uh, Yoda doesn't look very well. And he's sort of lying down. He's very tired. He's probably about a thousand years old, if I remember right. Yeah, now. something like that. I think he says that, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And he says to him, um, There is another Skywalker. I knew he was going to do an impression. <laughs> <laughs> mm. And Luke's like, Luke's like, You mean Leia? And he's like, Yep. The force is strong. You sense that well. So he now knows that Leia is his twin sister. Mm. And he's like, oh, shit, I kissed my bloody sister. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, I could say that's so awkward, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, oh. dearie, mate. <laughs> Just a little bit, a little bit of tongue involved with that as well. Isn't it? Mm. Okay. Yeah, we'll move he on. Says, we'll try and forget that. <laughs> <laughs> he says to him, um, Look, you're not going to die. And he's like, no, no, I am going to die. Don't worry. And he does obviously die in, in a minute. And he says to him, but I've still got so much to learn to become a Jedi. And he's like, no, no, you you are a Jedi. It's all good. Um, but your next task now is that you must confront Vader. And then he says the the bomb gets dropped. He says, and Luke sort of says, Vader, why? And he says, your father, he is. Oh, yeah, that's it, yeah. yeah. Oh, and then he dies, and like all good Jedi, he vanishes. Yeah. All and he's gone. And that's the end of Yoda, which is a bit disappointing, really. Yeah, I was a little bit because, sad with that, actually, when he goes. Yeah, as a kid, you're like, oh, what? Hang on. Yeah. I want more Yoda. How's, but, uh, how's he going to finish his training? I oh, know, obviously, it's, got, it's a confrontation thing now, isn't it? Or he's got to confront his fears and all that sort of stuff, hasn't he? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, luckily... He walks out and he sort of seems a bit sad. But then um, another Jedi appears. Old Ben. Yeah, old Ben turns up, doesn't he? Yeah. And he says to him, hang on a minute, Ben, you told me. (laughs) You told me that Vader killed my father. You said he destroyed him. He said, nah, what I told you was true from a certain point of view. Metaphorically (laughs) speaking. Yeah, sort of. Yeah, that's it. (laughs) Hang on a minute, Ben. Come on. And uh, he says, Ben, is it true? You know, have I got a, a sister? And he's like, yep, she's your sister. Vader's your dad. Um, good luck. <laughs> hey, he's having a good day, he? Cool. <laughs> Bury your feelings, though, because they'll use that against you. So he's got a little bit of 
you know, bit of advice from him. Uh, he's a bit torn. He doesn't really know what's going on. So there we go. That's that's uh, that's Luke's story so far. So we're back to the. Sh- going to quickly say as well I noticed here and I think this might be true you might be able to correct me on this Sebastian Stan for Winter Soldier is it right that he's going to play Luke Skywalker in a spin-off or did I get that right certainly heavily rumoured on the internet because the likeness between young Mark Hamill and Sebastian Stan is uncanny yes because that's why I thought I'd bring this up just whilst we're talking about Skywalker at the moment, so I was watching this and I thought, bloody hell, he looks like him, doesn't he? And obviously, they both lost a hand or an arm. Of course, yeah, that's <laughs> right, yeah, that's it, blimey, yeah, yeah it's all tying in. Yeah, and so. they both dabbled in the dark and the light side, so there's a few. Ah, so, <laughs> oh, okay, right, that's weird, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Right, right. And Disney ate it all. <laughs> and they're making all, all right, okay, yeah, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I tell you, said in my podcast, you're sponsored by Disney. Yeah, let's see. Oh my god, imagine <laughs> that. <laughs> I get, uh, was it Mickey Mouse with his little wand? Dun, do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, Let, I so. guess, sorry, man, I was going to say, this, <laughs> this time anybody goes into the Disney store, you know, I see a couple of figures of me in <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jim Creedy with action features. <laughs> it's some little like ten year old saying, I want the I want the teddy bear RJ <laughs> Next time Oh look they've got a damn bone up there. <laughs> yeah pull a cord pull a cord on his back. <laughs> pull a cord on his back and he says something stupid. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Actually, do you know what? There's something I did want to bring up with you. Um <laughs> Talking yeah. of um, going into stores and toys, right. um, obviously, you know, in the last couple of years, we've seen um, online shopping boom, especially with COVID. Yeah. But we did see the sad demise of Toys R Us, and a lot of big toy shops have gone, which I'm sad about, and I'm sure a lot of people are. Yeah. Now, just up the road from from me and Alice, literally a ten minute drive, is a new toy store called Smythe's Toys. And this is in no way a plug or anything. You know, I'm just mentioning, and we we. I said to Alice, the size of that place, we should go there when COVID sort of allows. And it did. It it opened last week. So we drove up, parked up with the intention to go and look at all these sort of baby stuff. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. But I said to her, while we're in there, I want to look at the toys. And I got this same sensation as going in Toys R Us. It was incredible. Uh, Yeah. yeah. So so we walked in. Yeah. And even though I'm, you know, 5'9", 5'10", when, when you were a child, you looked up and you, it would feel like the, the toys went up to the ceiling. Well, they actually kind of do. You know, I was looking up like they've got all the toys. So I went up the boys' aisle. I was going up on those Transformers. Yeah. There was all the... And then I got to one section and I'd forgotten that Mattel had brought out He-Man figures. So the original He-Man figures have been re-released. Oh, my but God. With just slightly different articulation and stuff. And I said to Alice, I'm getting such a weird yeah. like quantum leap yeah, feeling yeah. of me going back in time holding this toy in my hand. I do not She know. thought she thought I was nuts. But then we got to the Barbie section and she started feeling it as well. It's just that touch of nostalgia, isn't it, that you get? Oh dude, going in a toy shop when you were a child is just phenomenal, isn't it? I don't wanna grow up. Because there's a million <laughs> toys. <laughs> Something like that. Ah, oh, my toys are us. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool. Oh, toys dude. are us. Toys are us. Toys are us. <laughs> it was a dream, you know. My parents would wow. sometimes take us there and say, they were skint, but they would say, okay, you've got five pounds each. Yeah, that's um, right. Yeah. Yeah. We'd, we'd spend two hours in there yeah. playing on things, going around, you know, looking at everything. Well, and then eventually we'd have to decide what we wanted. We were so happy after sure. that. I, 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 you just said it. It wasn't so much about what you was going to buy. It's about what you were going to see, wasn't it? And it was just that oh. magical thing, wasn't it? And I think the Toys R Us for us, let's just say, is Willy Wonka. Oh, yeah. Does that sort of make sense? Do you know what I mean? So it's the... So whatever the kids, you know, they want to go and see this Wonka base. But for us, Toys R Us is the is that establishment, isn't it? I think. It was so. also like browsing the internet 
because I'd go yeah. and look around Toys R Us, mm. and then on Monday at school, primary school, you know, so I was probably six or seven or whatever, eight, I'd go in school and say, oh, I saw a new Transformer that does this. Oh, I went to Toys R Us and I saw a He-Man figure. He's got spikes all over his body. And your friends would be like, wow, wow, I need to see this. And then, you know, they'd go they'd in a couple of weekends with their parents. Then someone would get one of the new toys and bring it into school. So it's, you know, before the internet, it was yeah, like, wow. Well, I mean, like I say, my when I was, yeah, when I was a kid, you know, so, um, so when my parents used to go shopping at the superstore, uh, I'll be immediately going to the toy aisle whilst they're going Absolutely. shopping, and I'll admit, I seem to vividly remember looking at all the Ghostbusters toys. Oh, you know? yeah, yeah. I just like looking at, it. and you used to be able to get the little tubs of slime and everything. Yeah, you know, just like I yeah. seem to remember that. So, and it wasn't like I say, it wasn't. A, didn't really buy these toys because I was out like, sh- like food shopping. Um, but it was just being able to look at them. And I thought, ah, oh, these are cool. Yeah, loving it. And I feel like I could still smell that superstore and the toy aisle now, you know, the smell. I can still smell the plastic. Yeah, the plastic. Brand new toy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, you open it up and you. Oh, you know, like you said to me, <laughs> I can still smell those garbage pal kids and that yeah, bubble gum. Yeah. Like that kind of thing, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, but it is almost like a sort of conjuring, isn't it? As if yeah. you've conjured something up here, you know. And it's yeah, it's crazy. You know, it's just I know um, my I'll shout him out. Actually, a friend of mine, Darren Randall, he will be listening to this conversation and he'll be able to relate to it. So, a little shout out to you, Darren, <laughs> because he listens to the show quite a lot, and he'll, he'll he's messaged me a few times when we've got to get a chat and he's gone oh yeah yeah he goes i was totally on board with that conversation <laughs> so, <laughs> so he's there right now with us in toys he, of us walking up the aisle yes yeah he, he, he he's most likely listening to this and he's going yeah i get that <laughs> so, you know, the funny thing is RJ, and, mm. I, and i will get back on point in a bit but the funny mm. thing is is when i was in there you know considering how old some of these toy franchises are mm. I was in there with Alice and we saw obviously Barbie and He-Man, like I mentioned, and they're yeah. like 40 or 50 year old toy franchises. I saw Care Bears. Oh yeah, you know, Care I was Bears, seeing yeah. things in there like, I'm like, how are these still going? Obviously Transformers, Ninja Turtles, even stuff like Teletubbies, which came out in the 90s, is still being sold now. And I'm like, how How do some of these franchises keep going? Obviously mm. Star Wars is still on the shelves because there's always a cartoon, there's always a, a new film. Mm. It's just great to see it. And I obviously I'm, months only literally under two months away from becoming a dad so yeah i've got a perfect opportunity soon to take the children to the toy shop not uh, for them for me yeah well this is it you get to li- relive your childhood <laughs> again and you guarantee that your your children will be having these toys and they'll have they'll, they'll have the same uh type you know nostalgia or whatever for these toys as well in some ways because of you and it will carry on with it. So, and I think that's why that, yeah. I think that kind of answers that question where you just said. I think that's why they still uh, they're just as popular now as they were then because you know, we carry that nostalgia over, I guess. So. Also, you know, you've got your your film gods, and I do think you have like your, your franchise or your toy gods because it's, when something works, it just works. And mm. there's certain ones that keep going, like Transformers, Ninja Turtles. They just keep being made every single year because there's something about them that is that just magic for kids. Yeah, you know, it's just a magic formula, really. So uh, <laughs> there you go, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this show. <laughs> <laughs> right, so cinema is sponsored by Toys R Us. Toys R Us doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> no, this is it. Yeah, it, uh, it does. It does in our imaginations. So there you go. Well, right. back in Return of the Jedi, we now are in the strategy room where they are discussing what they're going to do, and we meet Mon Mothma, yeah. who discusses the plan about what they're going to do to destroy the Death Star. Um, Lando and Han reunite. So that's nice to see those guys mm-hmm. have a bit of banter between them. Um, we get Admiral Akbar, don't we? Oh, it's gold a trap! Face. It's a trap! <laughs> <laughs> and he says, Herald the forest moon of Endor. So they share the forest, <laughs> the forest moon of Endor, which is... Um, it's basically where they keep the the sort of force field generator for the Death Star. Yeah. 
it's, it's quite clever you know it's just this peaceful wooded planet full of these tiny little teddy bears with very sharp spears um but all we need to do is get there disable the generator and then our boys can go in take out the death star so we need to do it's nice and easy a couple of han solo grenades in there and the whole place just goes boom didn't it you know it's pretty powerful yeah so han chewie leia luke they all head to endor cool little mission to get their camouflage gear don't they yeah it's pretty cool as like i say something else you haven't seen before in star wars isn't it i think like camouflage gear and uh, i had um because of the speeder bikes i had luke and leia in their camouflage gear as toys um so i remember having those two and they would be the ones i wouldn't allow any other figures to sit on them it was like no 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 they're not they're not supposed to sit on them um, other than the scout troopers that are on Endor, you know those badass-looking stormtroopers with the slightly different helmets. Oh yeah, those yeah, they're pretty cool as well, aren't they? Yeah, um, I think I had the like I said, speeder bike, and I had the figures for those, which I liked, and also had a Attat as well. For my um, my parents bought that for me when I was on holiday, and uh, it was just. Are they the nice. Are they the four-legged or the two-legged? The two-legged ones. So yeah. this one, it had a button on the back, and you could operate the legs. And um, I remember that. I, I didn't have one, but I know one of my friends had one, and I just thought they were so insane. But they were a bit out of my parents' price range. I'd love to have got one of those. But... Yeah. No, I was treated to that when I was on holiday. So yeah, it was nice. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Well, as they head to Endor, Luke and Vader suddenly sense each other's presence a little bit and luke says i'm endangering the mission i shouldn't be here and they're like no 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 come on luke it's fine come on <laughs> let's keep going but vader sort of goes to the emperor and says i've got a feeling he, he might be quite quite a strong jedi the emperor sort of you know that's fine we can use that you know if he's that strong you know he's so confident in the dark side that the emperor's just like that it doesn't matter vader we, we're gonna win we're the we're the dudes it's all good pretty optimistic about it aren't they well he is, he is yeah mm. but you already sense at this point and perhaps it's with hindsight because we know where this is all going you already sense that vader has some apprehension about this yeah you do but um the other thing as well is, is that the music has changed for vader it seems a little bit lighter when he's when he comes in just notice that on this this watch yeah just stuff like that you know but, um, see john williams tells a little story doesn't he without even saying any words it's just that floating through it all the time yeah it's so clever and i think that's the thing there's so much detail that you you pick up on several viewings of this movie and um, but yeah no it's and I, I, I don't know whether there might possibly be a um oh what's the word i'm looking for like Nostradamus, where they can yeah, the Jedi like sort of prophesize. S- yeah, can they sort of see their fate? Possibly, maybe. so Vader possibly knows where all this is heading. So that's why he's maybe, like uh, so. maybe like the Cyclops in Kroll. Oh yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Oh god, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's it. Let's bring Kroll into um, this, eh? Let's bring some fire into well, this. Well, we've got to bring Kroll into it, you know. Yeah, exactly, I thought yeah. of Kroll when I reviewed Alien vs Predator in my last episode because they've got. Um, Almost a glaive, one of the predators. It's got yeah, like a glaive. Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I listened to that episode the other day, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there we go. That's uh, um, right, right to the twin sun's rise. So, <laughs> you know what? I was just about to say that exactly. What are you going to say? say? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the cinnamon bar. Oh, that's Don't right. Boys, yeah, that's boys your age normally have candy bars. Yeah. Out of all my wives, you're my favourite one, wasn't it? Fucking classic <laughs> line from Liam Neeson in that movie. <laughs> Good old Liam. <laughs> Good old Liam. He's a player in that film. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, Vader heads for Endor as well. Yeah. And he's got, he's got like a modified badass TIE fighter, hasn't he? His yeah, is I like love it. Yeah. Pimped out one slightly. I must admit, I do like the TIE fighters. I, I always have. I thought they were pretty good. The sound of them is just... Epic, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they sort of scream as they go by. They sound yeah. a bit like in um again in Kroll when uh <laughs> Yeah, that's it then. Yeah, yeah, when they break slaves. those guys' heads. That's it. <laughs> it's very, it's like, yeah. Creepy. Yeah, very creepy. 
Um, so on the forest, on the, in the forest, we get everybody in their camo gear. They see this. They see the scout troopers, and we get into our first speeder bike scene. Yeah. And my God, this scene is just phenomenal. We, you know, Luke, Leia gets separated away from Luke. Luke, you know, catches up with Han and Chewie. Where's Leia? He's just been in this epic fight. You know, where he's smashing into other. Um, speeder bikes are using ropes to pull them off of them and he's jumping from bike to bike he loses his sister though uh he catches up with han and Chewie. we don't know we thought she was with you we cut back and we see that leah leia is in the woods and she meets up with wicket oh, the uh ewok and then the, mu- <laughs> the music changes here again doesn't it by john williams and it's like that do 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 I love that. Yeah. And she sort of says, well, I don't know who you are or anything like that, but they, they start to kind of become friends mm-hmm. and they team up and they take, they actually take out some scout troopers between the two of them, um, which is great. And cutting back to the other guys, Chewie gets his, his stomach, gets them into trouble at this that's point. That's it. Yeah, that's right. Han Solo has another sort of Jack Burton moment here, doesn't he? Where, um, they end up getting caught up in a net, don't they, or something? Yep. And they're trying to. Re- Are you can you reach my lightsaber? No. Hang on a minute. Oh, yeah, that's it. So just swing it a bit more. Hang on a minute. And then while they're doing that, R two D two's got a little pizza cutter <laughs> that comes out, <laughs> and then he just cuts the cuts the net, and they just all fall down on the ground. <laughs> oh, brilliant. And this is where they get to meet the Ewoks properly, who surround them immediately and point spears at them um and they think 3po is a god because he's shiny he's golden and uh they all start immediately they all start oh oh that's it <laughs> oh and they sort of think he's some kind of metallic god so mm. they take him back to the village in a almost a throne whilst the other guys I'm guessing are going to be eaten for dinner. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. And free post kind of playing along with that as well, aren't he? Sort of thinking, well, there's nothing I can do because <laughs> my <laughs> data data banks don't allow me to lie. Well, I guess it's something like that, isn't it? I can't sort of not tell the truth or something like that. Yeah. Well, they get to the village and we see that Princess Leia is there, and she is looking beautiful. She's had her hair brushed out, and they seem to like her because you know her and Wicket are friends. Yeah. Um, so Luke says to 3PO, you know, tell them that if you if they don't let us go, you'll use your powers, you know, to, to hurt everybody. And he says, I don't have any powers. So Luke uses the force to make the chair float a little bit. And they all sort of think, oh, my God, we better let them go. Because, um, you know, 3PO is uh, using his magic powers on us. Um, so they let them go and they kind of become friends with them all. So the humans and the... Uh, Ewoks are all buddies now and we cut to sort of night time and they're having sort of a bit of a barbecue and they're chatting and 3PO is telling a story about what's been going on. Oh yeah, know. that's right. Yeah, that's it. And I love, I love this bit because he's got all the sound effects, hasn't he? Yeah. And he does all these sort of noises and there's even the bit where he says, Darth Vader and then you hear oh, the yeah. noises. Uh, it's just so cool. And there's like little baby Ewoks as well, aren't they? And they're sort of looking a bit scared by it always, aren't they? These stories. So. <laughs> they're very cute. Mm. They're so cute. Um, meanwhile, Luke says to Leia, look, unfortunately, Darth Vader's my dad. <laughs> yeah, sorry I kissed you. <laughs> oh, oh, that, yeah, that's for you. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. We're kind of, you know, it's, brother and sister as well and the other bad news is that Darth Vader's our dad sorry about that Han sees this and he thinks here we go something's up Luke's gonna steal my girl he'll find out the truth a bit later on so Luke gets captured well he kind of gives himself up really and he gets taken to Vader that's right and then he basically and this is where he's like talking to him like yeah I know that you're my father, isn't it? And he's talking to him like he's his dad now, isn't he? Yeah, he says, so you've accepted the truth. That's good. And he says, I, can, I see you've constructed a new lightsaber as well. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I'm all right. It's all good, Dad. Don't worry about it. Oh, Jay, oh, Jay McCready's rags from rags. Some of you drops. 
I made it out of um, a loo roll holder, a bit of pine, <laughs> yeah. and um, a fluorescent light tube from the kitchen ceiling. Yeah, this All is right, it. Dan? <laughs> Coming up next on RJ's from, R- from Rags to Movie Props. I did all that, and then I just soaked it in silver spray paint. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Impressive. <laughs> but, you are, yeah. but you are not a Jedi yet. No, this is it. <laughs> so he basically says to, to, to Vader, you know, come on, I know there's some of my dad still in there. And he says, no, absolutely not. There's no way that I, there's anything good in me at all. And he says, well, in that case, my father is truly dead. And that's kind of the end of that scene. And in the morning, we've got the mission to try and get into the bunker that mm. houses the generator for the force field on the Death Star. So they go up to the bunker. It's quite a lot of people sort of guarding it. So Wicket decides to distract the guards by jumping on a speeder bike. It's pretty cool. Yeah. It's yeah. very cool. Good little, very little boy. And uh, so they're like, wow, he actually did it. That's pretty good. So they get to go in there. Um, before they do that, though, we cut back and Vader brings Luke to Palpatine. That's it. And we get this, uh, a lot of talking now where Palpatine's basically just talking a lot of bullshit to Luke. Yeah, of saying, you know. he's, he's basically said that he's he's allowed the trap to happen, hasn't he? And he's said that, you know, I've set everything up. I know the Rebel Alliance are coming here to take us on and your friends trying to take the bunker out have been set up, haven't they? Which we now find out, don't we? So, yeah, he uh, says, uh, unfortunately, just to let you know, this Death Star is quite operational yeah and it's it's, you know so they're going to turn up they're going to get completely wiped out and luke just thinks oh for god's sake it's it's all gone a bit wrong here and this is all to to bring luke down to make him fully embrace the dark side you know (laughs) yeah i was just do you think luke might just go oh why don't you just fuck off I just if it had gone the other way when he said to him, take your Jedi weapon, strike me down. Imagine if he'd have just gone, all right. Yeah. There we go. You do a Kurt Russell then and go, oh. <laughs> send my regards to Obi-Wan Kenobi. I can <laughs> yeah, he's really trying to get a rise out of him, isn't he? He's trying to sort of say, you know, even if, he, even if it means me dying, It'll mean you've turned to the dark side. So come on, come on, kill me, kill me, come on. You haven't got the guts. Luke doesn't yeah. do it. He sort of fights it and fights it and fights it, um, which is great. Um, going back then, we've got Han, Leia and Chewie, and they're inside the bunker. They're setting the charges, but they do get caught um, briefly. Um, and Ewok saved the day. Chewie's in the ATST or the AT-80. Yeah. And they sort of, you know, he's, they've got the plan, which is they sort of, tell everyone inside you've got to come outside immediately come outside and they all run outside and they take them all out with all the Ewoks as well which is brilliant Lando gets to drive the the Falcon so Lando Colbrison's in the Falcon with his buddy um, and they've got all the other starfighters there but this is where we get the famous Jet Admiral Akbar as they approach it yeah. they say hang on a minute the force field's still up <laughs> and uh, what does he say RJ <laughs> It's a trap. <laughs> I, I, can hear, I can hear him go and say, oh, fuck off. That actor in that goldfish mask, when he said that, he never knew that that would become a meme 40, I bet he 50 never, years later. No, I bet he never did. I know. It's great. We all know it, don't we? Do you know what I mean? I bet he never thought in a million years. I, um, I used to have, I think it was the T-shirt I used to have that had Admiral Akbar, but he was in a Ghostbusters outfit and he was holding... Uh, a trap <laughs> brilliant oh, that's and great I like that crap. I, think, <laughs> yeah. I, I saw it bought it immediately I think, was it a t-shirt or a poster <laughs> it was something I had it wasn't that long ago I don't know yeah. where it is now but it's yeah great. that's badass yeah <laughs> yeah it's a trap there we go and I do like um, I do like this uh, fight um, this aerial combat space fight that they have I just thought it was really good uh, something that, can, something yeah. that Star Wars always does very well is the the dog fights, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, because you've got the introduction here of the different spacecraft as well, which you didn't see in the other two movies. Which uh, was it the A wing yeah. and the the Y the Y wing, which were pretty cool. Yeah. 
Yeah. So nice. X X you got the X wings, lock X fours and attack position. You got the Y wings, you got the A wings. I think there's B wings as well. Yeah. Um. So you've, you've got all these different um you know troops, these different um uh what what would you call them um squadrons I guess squadrons yeah that's it squadron leaders yeah. and um, pilots and all that so and they've got different um outfits on haven't they for the different craft as well and helmets and all that and so it's cool. yeah it's cool and there's all races all aliens humans everybody you know they're all in this together to take down these this goddamn empire once and, and for uh, all Lando Christian's cool as well wasn't he do you know what I mean he's just like we gotta give them more time gotta give them more yeah. time Come on, hand old buddy, don't let me yeah, down. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's like, it's like he's a, it's like he's on a casino table, isn't he? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, All it's eyes on that. me. Come yeah. on, everybody. Come Hands on, down. Let's shake Put the your dice. Money down. Come on, you're gonna get it this time. <laughs> Dang. I do. Having watched Empire, Empire Strikes Back a few weeks before this one, I when he first shows up and he kisses Leia's hand and mm. he's sort of such a smarmy guy. You know, when you first meet him, you think he's brilliant, isn't he? Billy oh, right. I absolutely yeah. love him. Yeah, yeah. I, I did like him when he turns up in the oh, what was it? The Rise oh, of Skywalker. Yeah, yeah. I, I must admit, I did enjoy that. I thought oh, it was great to see him in the back. No, um, the Rise of was it the Rise of Skywalker? Rise of uh, the Jedi. I can't remember what it was. Called. Rise of the Jedi. Yeah, but he turns up in the Millennium Falcon. And I just thought, yeah, that's great. I've just got my money's worth out of this movie right now, seeing him turn up. So that's great. That movie, that that final one, mm. um, the last, what was it called? The Last Skywalker. Um, Rise of the, I don't I remember the names of it. Rise but the last of one, number the nine. Skywalker, <laughs> isn't it? Or something like that, yeah. When he turns up, mm. um, that really paralleled Endgame for me because they just about thought all hope was lost. Mm. And you had, um, what's the guy called um, who's buddies with Finn? Uh can't remember his name now uh, uh, I, can't. I can't remember his name but anyway he thought all hope was lost there's no way they're going to do this and then he hears on the radio he says he says that's it guys we tried but there's not enough of us then you just hear Lando Corrissian say what do you mean there's not enough of us take a look at your window and it reminds me so much of on your left on your left just as Cap thinks he's lost oh right Thanos. yeah yeah yeah. Okay, yeah yeah and then before you know it the yeah. entire you know Marvel Universe shows up and it's just the same and that's the entire Star Wars universe shows up in that scene at the end and that was just phenomenal for me I really yeah, loved that I, bit I must admit I, I, it got a little bit slated that film but I quite enjoyed it actually I, I don't know it caught me just at the right time I think um, yeah I, I liked it I enjoyed it yeah I think it was Christmas time I went to go and watch it I think me and my daughter me and Maggie went to go and watch that together at the cinema so yeah yeah it was good it was good fun I love a Star Wars film. Yeah. <laughs> um, so they blow the bunker with Han's grenades, like we, like we said. We get the the fantastic "I love you, I know" moment, mm -hmm. you know, and we get this parallel now where we've got this ground battle and this space battle. So we've got the Ewoks, and it's kind of like there's a definite Vietnam War undertone all the way through. You know, we've got the the natives, as, as you will. Oh um, right, of, yeah, of this planet. yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and they're taking out this high tech um, what army with just spears and sticks and they're just completely demolishing the, the emperor the empire yeah, it's brilliant and then up in space we can see that our heroes are doing quite well they're taking out tie fighters we're losing people but we're winning at the same time um, so that's cool um and then palpatine uh st basically starts to fry luke uh with his lightning yeah but like i say luke's got to allow that to happen hasn't he to I suppose, I don't he know, just, Luke's somehow turning the tide for everybody here, is he, by... Because I suppose Palpatine's plan was for him to be struck down, but Luke's now being struck down, and then all the rebels are now beginning to win, aren't they? Do you know? It's, so it's yeah. a funny old thing, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And he gets he gives that little look while he's being fried. He looks over at Darth and he says, Father, please! And... What dad can resist, you know, seeing their son no. lying there? You're gonna, you're gonna step in. So he he steps in and he picks up the Emperor Palpatine, mm -hmm. and he just bench presses him and throws him <laughs> over the side. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just would have uh, liked to have heard Dave just come out and say, "I've been waiting to do this for <laughs> fucking ages." Piss off, you silly yeah, old, old bastard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so yeah, he throws him down the pit, um, and then Vader, um, and then uh, a ship, fl- lots of ships fly into the Death Star, uh, and they start taking out the inner the sort of whatever it is inside it, the core yeah. inside it, um, and the Super Star Destroyer gets taken out as well. Everybody starts evacuating. Luke's, Luke's trying to drag his dad out of there, and his dad says, "Look, I'm not going to make this." Um, and he's like, "No, come on, I can get you out of here. It's all good." It's a really sad scene, actually. Mm. Um, uh, and I, I always loved it as a kid. He says, "Take off my mask." And he's like, well, "You'll die without your mask." And he's like, "I'm going to die anyway. You know, I just want to see you with my own eyes mm. one last time." So he takes his mask off, and it's, as a kid, I used to think he looked like a bit like a potato. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I kind of get that. Yeah, I think you're right to possibly think that. Yeah, yeah. And he sort of they they have this moment. It's just really tender moment. Really, it's not really a lot said. But the bit that always really cuts me deep is when he says, "Tell your sister you have her eyes," and it's just like. He knows he's got a daughter as well, and then he then he just dies, you know, and that and that's it. Yeah. And Vader's done. Um, meanwhile, Lando, Wedge, and all the other guys they blow the reactor in the core, and the Death Star does its fantastic explosion, fireworks, etc. And Endor turns into one giant party. Ewok party, didn't it? Yeah. Oh it. yeah. Yeah. They love it. They were just waiting for that, weren't they? The old Ewoks. They know how to throw a party, don't they? They do. They get the yeah. barbecues out. They get all the fireworks going. Uh, they start playing the Stormtrooper helmets like a That's set of it. drums. Yeah. <laughs> and we do actually see, because this is the extended version, we do actually see parties on all the different planets, or well, a lot of different planets around the universe. Everyone's very happy because the Empire has fallen. Um, and then we're back at the village. Everyone's hugging, you know, Chewie, Han, Lando, Leia, Luke, everybody. They're all sort of celebrating. Wedge is there. That's right. Wedge Artolis, that's it. Yeah, because he's been through every battle, hasn't he? In the sort of yeah, he's, he's, you know, he's been there with Luke the whole, you know, the whole way, really. Um, Han says to Leia, look, do you love him? Because if you love him, I'm not going to, I'll go. I'll, I won't stand in your way. And she says, yeah, of course I love him. She's a bit mean here. She says, of course I love it. Like, yeah. I know it. I know it. But then she gives it almost too long. But then she says, he's my brother. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. And the look of relief on Harrison Ford's face when he finds it. <laughs> yeah. He's like, thank God for that. And then he sort of turns out to Luke like, yeah, boy. Yeah, it's a, it's a um, <laughs> typical sort of Harrison Ford. He's got some real sort of expressions, isn't he, that he pulls. He's like, what? Hmm? <laughs> he's brilliant he's brilliant um, Luke has cremation for, for Darth um, we know that that mask will eventually end up with Kylo Ren in the future mm. um, and then there's fireworks all over the galaxy parties everywhere everybody having fun and at the end the final scene is we and I love this seeing this and I it did bring a tear to my eye I'd, I'd, I'd had some glasses of wine but I do love this film and the bit where the three force ghosts turn up at the end yeah. Um, you've got Ben, you've got Anakin, and you've got Yoda. Luke looks over, they look at him, they all kind of nod. Um, and even if it is Hayden Christensen, you know, I don't care. It's still lovely to see. And that's the end. And then we get the. Yeah, that's it. So there you go. That's and, and, and as RJ McCready always says, if you're walking out of the cinema with that music playing and you're feeling it, and this film certainly does, you know, John Williams makes you walk out of there. Oh, yeah. A bit yeah, of a spring in your step, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, you feel like you've just had a space battle or something like that, don't you? Like, oh. it's just like... But I think this one I think this one in particular, um, it really does tie up now when I think about it, the um, Mandalorian, you know, with yeah. the way that's executed, isn't it? You know, so, um, especially at the beginning when you've got the Jabba the Hutt and you've got all those characters in the hut. And it's kind of like the Mandalorian is like, kind of like progressing that a bit more, isn't it? It's got the same sort of aesthetic to it as well. So that that um, whole beginning scene, you know, we, um, you and I have talked about this, and Gav and I have talked about this on my show. There are certain films where the first 20, 30 minutes of a film is what some films would love to achieve in their final 
yeah scenes yeah, you know yeah. and then this film does that you know that whole opening you know infiltration of Jabba's palace all the way through to the the sand barge the fight on the above the sarlacc pit and the escape yeah. that whole scene is just phenomenal yeah I suppose um, Empire did the same didn't it with like you know the the battle, oh. battle of Hoth. I mean, that's basically your final battle to any other movie, isn't it? Um, before they've even started, really. You know, um, when they escape Hoth on that, you kind of think, well, that's the film. But no, that's the beginning of the film. You've got a whole other hour and a half to go, yeah? Yeah. And it's yeah. so much going on. I love it. I absolutely love it. Yeah. And then, obviously, as we've mentioned before, with Indiana Jones, that's got the same thing as well, isn't it? A lot. You've got the final act... Of a movie, haven't you? Or of another movie before it, and it kind of ties in with the, this movie that you're watching. Um, yeah, it's, it's, that, it's it certainly become work. a trend. Yeah. It probably started in, in the early 80s with these films, but you know, a lot of the Marvel films, you know, you're going to open with, and the James Bond films do it, you know, you always open with a really big, elaborate stunt slash yeah. action yeah, well, yeah. scene. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a little, just a little taste of what we're going to get, guys. And then it's like, then the, the trade, then the music kicks in for James Bond or whatever it is. That's you're quite a good way of explaining, that, actually. Yeah, it is. I think probably, probably, I'll probably give James Bond the first um, uh, franchise which did that, isn't it? And I know Spielberg. I know Spielberg wasn't tied to these movies as such, but he probably had something to do with it somewhere in between. Oh, um, he would have been on some of the sets. Yeah, um, but he he was a, he was a big fan of James Bond, wasn't he? Um, hence he really wanted to we, direct it, didn't he? Yeah, hence the reason why we got obviously Indiana Jones. But yeah, no, it's clever. It's great. It's um, so. What's um, so? You said you've watched the um, all the Star Wars now. I know you, you had a big old sort of. Binge fest, I suppose you could say, when you was recovering. Yeah, you know, and I, I started right at the beginning, yeah. um, and I, I watched the prequels, which get really slated. But actually, you know what? Going back and watching them, there is something nostalgic about those now because the first one came out in '99, and I think it was '99. Yeah, and it was about then. Yeah, I think. And actually, at the time, it was like, wow, a new Star Wars films at the cinema. And, and at the time, we thought it was great. Then everyone realised it was not that great hmm. now i go back and watch it and i've got some nostalgia for it and those three are okay for what they are then i did um solo and rogue one um which are, are great you know yeah. and i like solo i thought solo was quite a good film you know chewie's brilliant in it rogue one's fantastic i thought I, I, i'm more of a fan of rogue one than i am han solo which is surprising um but rogue one i i really enjoyed yeah, yeah, it was it was very good, very uh-huh. very good. I, I thought that was probably probably one of the most refreshing Star Wars installments, and I, th- I think Rogue One probably is the reason why we got Mandalorian. I think studios yeah. went okay. This is this is where we need to start getting the, the franchise going back to now, and uh, yeah, yeah. it's great. Yeah, definitely, I agree. And, and, and then obviously I did the tri- this trilogy, you know, the, the original trilogy. And probably the, the the three best ones, let's be honest. You know, mm. they're the three that you think of. Then I did the new trilogy, which I like. I like The Force Awakens. And the last two, there's parts of them I really like. There's parts of them I don't. But they're Star Wars films, and I'm a sucker for Star Wars films. Yeah. To the point that I then watched the two Ewok movies when I realised they were on Disney Plus yeah. as well. And I was like, wow, yeah. let's get in here. <laughs> yeah, I think... I think um... I think a Star Wars movie can just catch you at the right time, for whatever reason that is. Um, yeah, I think the I think the one thing that let down Episode One for me was that Jar Jar Binks oh. character. I mean, just I can see why they're so probably possibly trying. I mean, I can see why they're trying to sort of add some sort of comic relief because you had that with Three PO. But it just didn't work. It just did not work. Fans oh, hated. this is Jar Jar Binks. This is not like you. Whatever, Jar Jar. Whatever. <laughs> I think it'd just I be like- <laughs> forever on memes on the internet when it was if someone's like slagging something off. It'll be just chuck a Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> <Meme. laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but it was a shame, though, because, you know taking that character away I think that would probably improve 
or not so there's a bit harsh to say improved because there is some really good stuff in episode one with I mean Ewan McGregor does a great job as Obi Wan Kenobi. And Liam Neeson. Uh, Liam, Liam Neeson as a Jedi Master. Yeah. Can you get any better than yeah, that? You know? Yeah. <laughs> I remember when um was it French and Saunders took that off back in Christmas around about that time. <laughs> oh just, really? Yeah, yeah, they did the, they 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 just re did the scenes with the Jedi's. And um I mean, it was <laughs> Jennifer Saunders talking with a real sort of broad northern accent yeah okay let's go up here <laughs> like, oh, <whatever. laughs> Just, yeah the I thing mean, is with the phantom menace i do have nostalgia for it because yeah it was 99 and i remember that was a good year like you had the blair witch project mm, the matrix mm. um and phantom menace and there was a lot of hype about films at the cinema you know i was really enjoying what was out at the time i don't know I do, I do have some nostalgia for the prequels. It's, it's a weird one. Yeah, no, there was. I mean, there was some big hype for episode one, wasn't there? I remember the trailer coming out and everybody going, oh my God, there's another Star Wars movie coming out. It was like, ooh. So, um, but yeah, no, it's, um, yeah, I think this, uh, I think this franchise will continue. I don't, I don't, I don't think yeah. it'll go, any, go anywhere. For... Well, we know that we're getting another film um directed by is it patty jenkins that did the wonder woman movies she's directing um squadron isn't it, something like that, isn't it? yeah that's it yeah a uh, rogue squadron i think it's called yeah yeah that'd be good. um so that's cool and we know that disney plus have got a lot of shows lined up they've got another episode another season of the mandalorian plus two or three spin-off series plus a couple of animated series plus an ahsoka talon series um so there's they've gone and gone a bit overboard and it does worry me but there's about five or six tv shows lined up on disney plus plus this movie plus i know that um jj abrams is going to do a new trilogy i think it's jj abrams that's doing a new trilogy could, but, um, could well work, may well be yeah it could be um just on a different note with talking about the mandalorian with pedro is it pedro pascal yeah, he was in Wonder Woman too. Actually, I watched that the so other day. So he's they're now they're filming it at the moment. He's he's uh, playing Joel uh, as a character of one of my favourite computer games, which I've mentioned before, is The Last of Us. Yes, I saw that. Mm, watch out for that one, Dan. I, I don't want to hope it out, but if it's as good as the game is, mate, and with him on board. He'll be very good, I think. He's a great actor. I like him and everything. Yeah. Sadly, he couldn't rescue Wonder Woman 1984. Oh, right. Uh, that film was pretty bad. But oh, was it? Oh, well, I remember you. Yeah, I think I remember you posting that online. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I, mean, I think I think you're probably the same as me, Dan, though, because that you try to watch films with optimism. Um, I think Spiel, I think Spielberg said it once, is that he tries to watch a film because... Even if he doesn't like it, he tries to try and find something good out of it because it's someone's art or creation. So, there must be some sort of purpose for that person to make it for whatever reason. But, um, yeah, that's exactly how I am. But um, apart even from, with uh, some films, apart from Battlefield Earth, <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> that is not a good one, is it? <laughs> God, <laughs> dear Lord. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could probably make an episode of that. Is well, how 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 are some films green it? Or do you know what I mean? It's just like, mean? Yeah. it does make you wonder. You know, oh, that'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. Give these guys some money. You think what? Wow. How? <laughs> you could have given me the money, and I could have done something better than that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. It's crazy, isn't it? Just unreal. But um, that's yeah. Hollywood. That's Hollywood for you. That's it. Uh, but no, thanks, Dan. Thanks for coming on to the show today, mate, for this. Um, so what? Absolute if... pleasure. Thank you for having me back. No, nah, it's been an absolute blast, mate. And I'm... Every time... I say this every time, I'm absolutely sweating on the other end of this, Mike. <laughs> well, you know no, I mean? all over the, We've been all over the universe. Okay. We've been to Tatooine. We've been to Toys R Us. We've been everywhere during this journey. I feel, I feel like I need to shower, Dan. You know, it's like... <laughs> I mean, I'm going to jump in the chair and basically going to go, why are you in the chair? I've just, well, I've just spoken to Dan, you know, for, <laughs> you know, for like God. I need to wash myself down. <laughs> Cold shower. Hey, I get it all the time. 
this way. <laughs> Gonna go outside now and shout in the garden. Oh! <laughs> 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 so, I don't know where that's come from. There you go. <laughs> My face is hurting from laughing. Oh, I've just spoken to damn bone. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> what are we, after what that, are you anyway, yeah. we we're talking about doing Monster Squad. I mean, we've got a lot on the oh. list, but I was thinking about it. I'm now, up for that. Do you reckon okay, now? Um, you reckon we can just fit that one in? Because uh, yeah, just before the twins arrive, you reckon? I reckon. I reckon we'll get that one out in a few weeks. I reckon. Okay, then, mate. We'll get that. We'll get that one sorted out. So we get the monster squad, and like I so say, we've got another. We've got a load on the list to do, haven't we? Because we spoke Chuck about. Until you drop. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I've got that one in my car at the moment. Actually, that song. Such yeah. a good song. Yeah, because I watched it recently. Because they released it on. I think it was on Amazon Prime. Yeah, it's on Prime cool. for free. So just you can just yeah, go and watch the monster squad really, whenever you really want. Really enjoyed which is it. Sick. And it's loved amongst the horror fans. I don't know anybody that doesn't really like that film. Every time it gets posted online, there's like loads of people talking about it. and So, uh, yeah, it's a good film. Yeah, absolutely. So, so what have you um, What you got coming up next on your show, then, Dan? Well, the next episode up? is uh, my belated birthday episode. Hmm. Um, you'll like this, actually. Oh. So, I've, de- I've selected, because it's my episode, I've selected my first two films i bought on vhs when i was about eight or nine yeah i bought them as x rentals from the corner shop and those are team wolf and labyrinth with david bowie oh mate uh, that's a great choice that's a, uh, in fact i'll i'll be very interested to hear you guys tackle labyrinth as well um yeah me too because i don't think gav's seen it from what he's saying right um which is odd because he's got three children but yeah, he does surprise me sometimes when he says, you know, yeah, I'm quite surprised because I like to, uh, well, be interested to hear his thoughts on that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's Jim Henson, it's David Bowie, you know, it's just, it's a great, great, silly, fantasy, dark at times film and yeah. a very big part of my childhood, oh, yeah. as I'm sure it is yours and a lot of your listeners. But that and Teen Wolf, so Teen Wolf's another one that's a big part of my childhood. Yeah, I remember um, you saying about it. yeah, I remember you said, yeah, with like the sort of puberty thing and all that. It's yeah, yeah, it's totally interesting. Right. Yeah, there's a actually. lot of stuff in it that I got from that. Yeah. Michael J. Fox is cool as well. So that's next for us, episode 112 of the podcast on Haunted Hill. It's Dan's birthday, Teen Wolf and Labyrinth. Fantastic. Excellent. Oh brilliant mate. That's great. All right, mate. Well, we'll look forward to that. So, um, again, thanks for coming on to the show. As, as always, mate, it's always a blast. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we so we've mentioned Willy Wonka, Inspector Gadget. <laughs> yep. Uh, Toys R Us. Toys R Us. Um, Jean Claude Van Damme is coming <laughs> to it. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, um, we've done it all. <laughs> and we're talking about a Star Wars movie so there you go who would, who would have known it's just wherever we end up so alright buddy well um, ending it on what do you want and all that <laughs> pure imagination um, let's uh, let's do some admin for the show before it close up so uh, I am a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network, um, so please go and check out all the other shows as well, including Dan and Gav's show, which is a podcast on Haunted Hill. Um, also, my other show, which is the Mystery Vault podcast, so I talk about all the unexplained and stuff like that, so I'm having a, having a blast with that show as well. Um, you can find uh, Bite Size Cinema on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, several other players. If you put in a bite-sized cinema podcast onto Google, and uh, if you need to contact me or you want to contact me, or you, uh, I've got a Facebook page which is where I'm most active. Uh, so you put anything on there, any movie suggestions or anything like that. So, um, and that's it. And one other thing, Dan, I was quickly going to mention this before I go. Uh, just a quick shout out to. Kate Pollock, and I know you mentioned this on your show, Dan, is that she's uh, got a new podcast out, hasn't she? 
Is it the... Um... Yes, he does. Eternal Darkness of the Not-So-Spotless Minds. Yes, so I listened to it the other day. Um, her and her friend called Matt Wood. Uh, yeah, having a great time. I think it's... To be honest with you, mate, we both know it's right up her street, isn't it? I, I, I knew eventually she'll be podcasting because she's got the passion for it. So, um, so yeah, so that's on uh, Spotify and iTunes now, I think. So, uh, yeah, so most yeah. places you can get some um, podcasting, yeah. So, I thought I'd give her a shout out there as well. So, it's always good because we've got a great podcast community that we've got and it's great everybody's sort of getting involved and doing stuff so um oh and the other thing dan i was going to mention as well you've got some t-shirts as well haven't you for your show oh i have yeah if you want to get yourself a podcast on a haunted hill t-shirt go to deadboltfilms.com go to the merchandise section and we've got blue white and gray Mm. and they are in small medium large and extra large and i know that rj mccready himself has got a blue one i have which i've I've seen it seen it hanging on your washing line (laughs) (laughs) yeah i thought uh, i don't know why you know it's hanging on the line i just thought let's take a photograph of this and put it on your page (laughs) let my my shirt's had its first wash Uh, I know they would be taking that on holiday with me, mate, and getting some snaps abroad and all that sort of stuff. I, do that I want to see it in Frankenstein's Castle. Please. Oh, yes, that's right. I was going to quickly say that as well. Um, yes, that's our next adventure with with the boys on a little trip. So uh, we're going to try and do that next year. So I didn't even know Frankenstein's Castle was such a place, but it is. So well, me neither, but... Um, Hopefully you won't find some body parts, stitch them together, and then create a monster while you're there. Well, I, uh, we, I think we started the show with Gene Wilder, or in the show with Gene Wilder, because that was, you know... <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> what was the name of that film? I can't remember what film that was. Was it... Um... Young Frankenstein. Yeah, Young Frankenstein, that's it, yeah. So... Frankenstein. 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 Do you want some warm milk? No! <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no, no, no. <laughs> Typical. Well, there you go, Bell. guys. <laughs> we end it on Gene Wilder. It's gone from a Star Wars movie to Gene Wilder, so there you go. Um, yeah, thanks for listening, guys. Keep it by our sides, keep it safe, and I'll see you soon. enjoyed this show then make sure you check out the other great shows on the legion podcast network like cinema psyops cinema beef devour the podcast duncan and Bo come correct exploding heads horror movie podcast friday the 13th get slayed the hell Ming power hour hello this is the doom show hero hero ghost show kill the cast underwater kaiju from outer space jerry hates action legion after dark metal health obsessive cinema discourse Pick Six Movies, the podcast by The Cemetery, the podcast on Haunted Hill, the Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which Versus the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.